let's go to a little bit of that fake outrage over this comment and then you know some of those same people and what they have said about political violence. So here's Marjorie Green uh, saying Jane Fonda and many Democrats want you and me murdered in quotation marks, which is like, I feel like you knew that it was a joke then if you're putting in quotes mm -hmm. for fighting to protect the most innocent in the womb. Believe Democrats when they say the quiet part out loud. Oh, You've picked up on that line. Sounds like they want us dead. Mm. Okay, that's like stupid. Yeah, someone was <laughs> like, yeah. Oh, they should be murdered. Sounds like they want to say yes. That's what that means. That's <laughs> the, that's what that joke means. Thank you for identifying the meaning of a word, Marge. Like my <laughs> goodness. But they also didn't. Nobody's talking about you, girl. Nobody like seriously. Nobody's talking about you. If anyone, and she didn't say this, but you got to think about the lifetime appointments we got going on here. There's only one place where people cannot. The only right. way for them to lose their job is for them to perish and mm -hmm. die. Well, not advocating murder, but uh, if anyone, we're talking about Clarence Thomas. Let's be real. Uh, <laughs> I mean, but I think it's also like, okay, first of all, what I I don't want any of these people to be murdered. I don't want any. I don't want Marjorie Taylor Greene to be murdered. I don't want any of these people to be murdered because what happens to a person when they're murdered because of political violence? They become like a cause. Mm -hmm. They give oxygen and strength to their side. They they give like a, a justifiable, like they light a justifiable fire under the butt of people who agree with them. No, totally. I want Marjorie Taylor Greene to eventually end her, her political career, career in disgrace. And I want her to live out the rest of her days, her long days of health as a joke. That's yeah. what I want. I don't want any of these people murdered. I want them to have the humiliation of witnessing their children having to explain their parents' clownery in order for them to assimilate into society. Yeah. I want them to see the harm that they've not only caused to people around them and how hated they are, but like the harm that they've caused to the people that they allegedly love. There's a little bit more hypocrisy going on here. So so Green continued to make this about herself, of course, saying unapologetic pro-life politician here. I routinely get death threats because of the nasty women on The View and the things they say about me. But calling for us to be assassinated makes The View, the host, the producers, the network, the advertisers and everyone involved responsible for death threats, attacks and potential murders of pro-life politicians and activists. I'm reporting this. Okay. <laughs> okay, Karen. Cool. Like that's, yeah. That's the most Karen-y tweet I've ever seen. It's like I am reporting yeah. it. Yeah. Um, by the way, Jane Fonda, your eggs are dried up, so you don't have to worry about getting pregnant anytime soon. So you can retire from demanding baby murder now. Okay. First of all, Jane Fonda at 90 years old looks better than Marjorie Taylor Greene looks at age like 40. Yep. So doesn't really matter if she's got eggs or not. She is still. Uh, yeah, stunting on you, Marge. But <laughs> but but okay, this is just so rich. Like I love when right wingers suddenly feel threatened as if they don't know that their side has all the guns and the crazy conspiracies to boot. Like that their side are the ones who've been randomly planting pipe bombs. Oh, stormed the Capitol on January 6th, looking to hang the vice president and to put everyone else in handcuffs, right? Like and to that end, Marjorie also knows that that's exactly what they tried to do on January 6th. Here she is, if you guys forgot, saying that next time they're going to be armed as if they weren't already. Mm -hmm. And I want to tell you something, if Steve Bannon and I had organized that, we would have won. <laughs> Not to mention, it would have been armed. Haha, <laughs> that's her saying she couldn't have possibly organize January 6th because if she and Steve Bannon had done it, we would have been armed and we would have won. Yay, what a great way to absolve yourself of what happened. That's you know, that's see when you are when you're like, no, no, I couldn't be the murderer. Cause if I murdered him, I would have made sure to like cut off, like cut him into little parts, like smaller parts, and put them in it like little suitcases and then float them <laughs> down the river. Like that's see, that's what I would have done. Yeah, what? and that's why you can't take her whining seriously about this. Like you can't, it's just posturing. I think it'd be one thing if it were somebody who did not have a history of incendiary comments, who had been themselves the target of a comment, of a joke like Jane Fonda's joke. Then they would have some legal, like moral ground to stand on, but they don't. Also, how many how many abortion doctors have been murdered? Yep. How many, how many, like compared to pro-life politicians, how many? 
it's a lot more abortion doctors. I can't think of a single pro-life politician who has been murdered as the result of their actions or beliefs. No, no, absolutely not. And and that's this the we we have to for, somehow we are told and asked to forget that every single day that we put uh, anti-choice extremists on the same footing of people who are asking for bodily autonomy, who are marching for their rights. Uh, unarmed, not getting anyone's faces, not planting bombs, not targeting doctors or offices, uh, not trolling people, uh, right? Like, like they're not on equal footing. These are very different movements. Um, one is for human rights and one is an extremist fringe, fringe minority uh, who will go to any lengths to stop people from exercising their bodily autonomy. And look, what I love about Jane Fonda, final point on this, she knows that she's not going back. She's not apologizing for that comment. And she responded by saying, look, while women's reproductive rights are a very serious issue and, and very extremely important to me, my comment on the view was obviously made in jest. My body language and tone made it clear to those in the room and to anyone watching that I was using hyperbole to make a point. That's why I like Jane Fonda. It's none of this like backtracking, oh, I'm sorry, I would have never. Ooh. And look, I understand she's an actor. She can, you know, she's not necessarily a politician, um, at least if a Democratic politician, because Republicans never apologize. That's how they get away with what they get away with. Um, but I appreciate that, that despite all the onslaught from far right wingers, and I'm sure she's getting it and she will continue to get it for weeks. She just doubles down is like, no, no, it was a joke. Calm down, it was a joke and we need to focus on the real issue, which is reproductive rights. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I just can't take any of this like conservative pearl clutching on this issue seriously at all. It, yeah. it is, and, and I think that anybody who on the left who does take it seriously and respond to it seriously is really falling for, for something they shouldn't fall for because they do this every time. They do yeah. this every time. They're not serious people. They should not be responded to seriously. Jane Fonda said it was a joke. Let's like take her word for it. Nobody is dying because of Jane Fonda's joke. No. But exactly. People are dying because of Republican policies that limit abortion access. So For more political news breakdowns, interviews, stories of activism, and me trying my hardest to care about the occasional big celebrity news story, subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash the damage report. And you can ring the bell wherever it is so you don't miss anything.